this is the A74. And in the last two years, this camera has done more air miles than the average human being does in their entire lifespan. Okay, you might be saying, Sohil, what does this camera, having done 50,000 miles in the last year alone, have anything to do with reviewing this camera after two years? Well, when you go traveling, what is the first thing that you put in your camera bag? Or any bag, for that matter. For me, it's this A74. Before even I put my toothbrush in my bag. Ugh. Sounds a bit weird, but it's true. This goes with me everywhere. So let me tell you the three things that I love about the Sony a7 IV after having used it for the last two years, day in, day out. And one thing that I really just hate. And on top of that, I'll let you know whether you should think about getting this camera two years later. A two-year-old camera, which in the Sony ecosystem is ancient because they tend to release a camera every fucking day. Let's get started. Yeah. What's the worst case scenario? Plan out in your head how it's all gonna go. So you think you got it covered But there's always something new that you discover You've not thought about You can never fit There are many reasons why this camera is very special and close to my heart But let me give you a little bit of backstory as to how I ended up With a Sony camera in the first place The year is 2008 and I've just got my hands on the Nikon D90 the first camera to ever take video, a DSLR, the first DSLR ever to take video. Not only that, it's the most popular camera on the planet. It was up until the iPhone 4 came along and took that crown from it. And since then, I've always been a Nikon guy. You know, the D90 in 2008, D7000 in 2011, D7200 in 2015, and finally, the Z6 in 2019. And that was a turning point, because a lot of people, not just me, were moving away from DSLRs onto mirrorless systems. And I decided to go down the Z6 route because, well, hey, I'm a Nikon guy, or at least I was in 2019, and I've heard great things about the Z6. The photos are fantastic, the videos were great, the photo and the video capabilities of it were very good, but one thing that I did when I bought the Z6 was I turned a blind eye to the predecessor of the a7 IV, the a7 III. The a7 III was making waves in the industry, not just on YouTube, but real industry. And people were really happy with how incredible the autofocusing system was on that camera. And quite frankly, it made me jealous because the autofocusing system on the Z6 was shockingly shit. It was pretty bad. And it was in that moment that I realized I'd made a mistake. Having done the research, I thought, hey, the A7 III is a bit older, the Z6 is newer. You know, I'm in the ecosystem, I have some lenses, let me just use a Z6 and see how it goes. But it was a mistake. A mistake which took me two years to realize because I'm a man and it takes a long time to realize my mistake. Two years, that's right, because it wasn't up until 2021 when the a7 IV was released that I decided, hey, enough is enough. I've had enough. Enough is enough. I've had enough. Ooh. And I decided to switch to the a7 IV. Now, if you want to find out all the little nitty gritty about this camera, then there are lots of reviews, including mine, that you can go and watch, all the different picture profiles you can use, the autofocusing modes, and the different modes that you can use in the burst shooting, etc. that this camera is capable of. But this is my thought on using this camera for two years. After two years, what do I make of it? And there are a couple of things that I really love. And I want to start by talking about the number one thing, the autofocusing system. I love the auto-focusing system on this camera. If a7 III was groundbreaking, this is earth-shatteringly good. And I have to say that because my video on the a7 IV's 
auto focusing system has over a hundred thousand views which if you haven't seen it already go and check it out i have a very simple formula on how to set the auto focusing on this camera for the focus mode i use continuous and for the focus area i use tracking with an expanded spot and basically all that means is when i half press the shutter and my spot is on a person or an item it's going to track it and it does it every single time without fail fantastic you'll be surprised to know that in 2023 there are still cameras and camera brands out there that don't have auto focusing systems as good as this two-year-old camera surprising and mind-blowing i've taken this camera on weddings photo shoots taken photos of birds flying birds and the autofocusing system works like a charm it doesn't fail me sure not every photo is perfectly in focus but you'd expect that at the price point but i'm very much happy with the results that i get from it the second thing that i love 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 about this camera is the switching between modes like photo mode and a video mode and sure simple enough but the fact that my settings are kept the same i can have different settings for photo to video and that is so helpful especially when you're out at weddings and you're taking photos majority of the time and you decide hey i want to quickly take a little video i can switch over to the video mode it remembers that it's 24 frames a second one over 50th frame rate auto iso everything's adjusted perfectly well wow there are also a lot of minor things that i want to cover quickly one of them being the full hdmi slot trust me it's fantastic and having that is a godsend dual sd card slots um one of them is a cf express as well but i have sd cards and i shoot simultaneously to both of them especially at a professional event i want to make sure i have backup and this does that it is fantastic Super 35 mode, uh, basically a 1.5x crop on the full frame sensor. And for photos, sure, you crop it and you lose the image quality. But for videos, because the full frame camera, this full frame camera records the entire sensor, and that means it's a 6K, 4K image. When you crop in using the Super 35 mode, you get a 1.5x zoom on your 4K without losing any quality. So your 4K24 at full frame or at 35 or 1.5x is the same, and it is fantastic. It means that my 35 mil lens technically is a 50 mil as well, and my 50 is a 50 and a 75. Or if you're shooting a 28, 24 to 70, then your range is really 24 to 100. It's fantastic. Now, those are all the things that I love about this camera. You know, they make this camera what it is, but I have one gripe with it. And it's an interesting one because the issue that I have with this camera is intermittent and something that I can't replicate time and time again. The a7 IV possesses some kind of a buffer ghost, if there's such a thing. It just doesn't clear the buffer sometimes. Right, and I don't mean, you know, the capacity of the buffer itself. No, I'm not doing, you know, burst shooting here. I'm talking about, hey, I've taken a photo, just one photo, and the buffer doesn't get cleared for 15, 20, 30 seconds. And I can take more photos after that, and they get cleared pretty quickly. But that one photo still remains and the buffer doesn't get cleared for a very long time and i can't do anything else i can't switch modes from photos to video i can't turn the camera off well i can by taking the battery out but that's not very good and i have yet to find a solution for it i've tried different sd cards you know i've tried the very expensive uh, cf express a card as well and it seems to just happen out of the blue, out of just complete randomness. Has anyone watching this video experienced something like that? Maybe not on the a7 IV, but one of their other Sony cameras where it sometimes behaves really weirdly. 
yeah, so that's the one thing that I've not been able to solve. And that's the one thing that I really hate because fortunately this hasn't happened to me when I've been at a professional event where I'm doing photo shoots or weddings. But if it does, it's a little embarrassing for me. So touch wood, it never happens at a professional event. But uh, yeah, that is the one downside that I've found so far in two years use. And it's, you know, minor. But if you have come across this issue, then please leave a comment. I, I want to talk to you. I want to connect. I want to try and figure this out. So the year is 2024 and you're looking to buy this two to three year old camera, the a7 IV. Would I recommend this camera to someone in 2024? The answer is, it depends. And no, it's not a cop out. Bear with me because Sony have a really weird release cadence and they have so many different cameras that they release pretty much every month there is a new camera that Sony releases. One of those cameras in the last two years has been the Sony a7C Mark II, which is basically an identical version of the a7 IV, but it has AI autofocusing. whatever that means. Not only that, but they're both priced at a similar range. At this current point in time, I'll put a couple of links up here. Both of these cameras can be had for £1,900. So you see why it's a difficult decision. If you were to come to me and ask me, hey, so which camera should I get, the a7 IV or the a7C II? So here's how I would cut the cake between the a7 IV and the a7C II. If you're buying a camera, for personal use and personal use only. And I mean, going on holidays, landscape photos, bird photos, family photos, street photos, you name it. You're just taking photos for personal use only. Then I'd get the A7C2 because it's a much more compact version of this A7 IV and it's newer with a slightly better autofocusing system which on paper is questionable, but it's still newer and better. But if you're planning to foray into any kind of professional work, or you just have a massive hand for gripping purposes, then I'd recommend the a7 IV over the a7C II. Why? Well, full HDMI slot, dual SD cards, better viewfinder, better grippage, things that you'll appreciate in the long run. And that's my advice to you, you know, if you were looking to buy the a7 IV. But you might be asking, Sohil, what would you do? Well, I would just go on a secondhand site and buy myself an older Sony a7 IV. But that's just me. And this has been a little overview of the Sony a7 IV after two years, how I've kind of fallen in love with this camera over the past couple of years. It's been a fantastic workhorse for me and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.